So this video, we're going to get into more ways that you can travel the world without going broke. Um, this is a really real topic that people just don't like to talk about. They want their lives on Instagram to be so perfect, but the reality is it takes work and it takes research, um, but it doesn't have to be hard. So I was going to talk about how you can travel the world by doing work exchange in hostels and campgrounds as well as festivals. So um, these are some ones that I personally loved when I did. Um, seriously, best experiences of my life that money can't buy. And that's one thing that I really believe is a life of travel is something that makes you rich without any money being necessary to make that happen because you are living for the experience of life. You're not living to get rich to do this and do that. And of course, that's a very subjective opinion. So I'll just try to keep it on track and we can go into that for another video. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about hostels, camping, festivals, and then I'll throw in two more at the end. So make sure you watch all the way through. So hostels. There was one that I stayed at in Vail, Colorado, and um, shameless plug because I love them, The Bunkhouse. It's a hostel in Minturn, Colorado, tiny mountain town outside of Vail, which is like a super popular ski town and brings in a lot of tourists in the high season. So winter for sure but also summer because there's just so much to do in the high mountains of Colorado. So in this hostel I actually had the craziest journey in getting there. This valley is impossible to get housing in. Um, I kind of just stumbled upon it and it worked out for me to stay. I ended up staying there half a year when I intended to only stay for a few months. So obviously I fell in love um, with the location, but also I met my now partner, Tristan, in Colorado. So um, really a special place to me, but also just I'll stop rambling and get to the good bits. <laughs> so as far as hostels go, each hostel is going to have a different requirement in order for you to do a work trade. I feel like I had one of the best opportunities I could have asked for. So since I teach yoga, I was able to teach a class for the owner and she herself is really into um, deeper healing work and I also do Reiki so I got the chance to meet with her and and show her what I can offer to her hostel community which it's so funny that it's hostel is the word because it's not hostile at all um, it's a very welcoming community so <laughs> I almost don't like the word but um, yeah so I taught her and her staff and um, she decided that she was going to make room for me even though she didn't have any need for any more staff members at that time. So I got really lucky because there was no need for me except that I had a skill that I could offer. And so teaching yoga is a great way to get in. You could also offer social media marketing. You could offer art trades. So a lot of these places, these art, these hostels, they love art. They'll have you paint the wall and you can stay there for um, however long it will take you to do a mural. Or you can be so creative and just work out some kind of negotiation that works for both parties. And in my case, I taught yoga. Well, high season left, staff left. 
her staff went down and she was having a hard time keeping um, keeping the flow. So she ended up switching me from teaching yoga to doing um, staff work, which worked out because it was no longer good temperature outside to teach yoga and she didn't have room inside the hostel. So naturally I transitioned more into reception. So the way that she did it, you work one day a week. Each staff member works one day a week. So there's seven staff members and you choose your day and that is your day. So say my day is Sunday. Well, that means that I in the mornings I am counting the register. I am um, cleaning up the the place. There's a kitchen. There's a living room. It was very homey. Um, not a typical hostel that I have been to out of the states. Uh, so, but I really liked it. So you clean up everything, all the services, take out the trash, you're recycling, the compost, and then you go on to switch the beds. Um, so for anyone who checked out, you need to flip the beds and get it ready for the next person. And then you just need to do a whole sweep and mop and then clean the bathrooms and a bunch of other stuff, but you have the whole day to do this. And by the evening, you're just hanging out and waiting for your guests to come in. I could sometimes bust it all out in two hours and then the rest of the day, I just needed to be there for any guests that had questions or needed help with anything. Um, so really simple, uh, good way to have a day to work, but also once you're done with work, you can relax and know that you're still working. Um, fulfilling your exchange but you can work on other stuff uh, if you have your own side stuff as long as you're you know fulfilling the requirements of whatever place you go to so that is probably the most cushy hostel job you could ever ask for a lot of places will make you work several hours a day in order to do an exchange um, so it really depends on where you go and I can go more in depth about my story in this mountain town um, If you guys would like so definitely let me know um, I can tell you what I was doing for work there and all sorts of stuff so The next topic is Camping there's a lot of campgrounds that need camp hosts and you can go, you could do it, you know, all of these things apply to people who are single or in a relationship or have friends they're traveling with. Um, I feel that it's easiest as a single person, but I've also done it with my partner. So we went to California after we left the hostel and um, we found a campground that we were going to do a work trade at. And this was a place where you work a certain set hours and we were going to get paid and then also have a free place to camp. So it depends what you're looking for. We had a camper, so that would, like, we didn't end up doing it, but that would have worked for our situation. Um, uh, other people, they don't want to camp. They want to have more luxury. Okay, work, work in a hotel. Um, find what works for you. Lastly, festivals, traveling the world. When you don't want to break the bank by volunteering at festivals or even working festivals. So I got the chance to volunteer at a huge festival in Australia. Um, it's the biggest festival on that side of the world. And it was hard work. I'm not gonna lie. It was hot. It's like temperature was hotter than it's ever been there while I was there. And um, you're working eight hour days and it's just like working a job except more. So we didn't actually get like any days off the whole build but if you need to, they'll let you. Um, 
But, like, honestly, it's kind of a part of the experience is working with these people, going through it together. And the way it was set up is you would help the build of this festival. It took about 600 volunteers to create this huge festival. Um, so I think it took about a month roughly to get it set up. And then the festival is five or six days and then people stay for two weeks after if you want. So some people stay before, some people stay after, some people volunteer during so that way they get to go to the festival for free, but they also have to work it. So what I did was volunteered before it because at that point I was like, I want to meet people. What better way to meet people and make new friends than to volunteer together in a place where you're working together and you're camping. So I slept in my hammock for that month and it was awesome. Best sleep ever. Um, and I'm going to touch on that later in a different video, but yeah, so my experience here was just working and doing all my volunteering before and that way during the festival I had the entire time to roam and play. So if you break it down logistically, this doesn't work for some people. If you are limited on time and you have more money, I would say go for just buying the festival tickets. But we were getting food provided, like high quality food. I was working in the kitchen. I know I saw it all. And, um, and having great experiences with people who I learned so much from. So even though there was no monetary exchange, there was so much more that was greater than I could have ever asked for and it changed my life so I definitely recommend recommend volunteering at festivals that is definitely the longest volunteer festival you'll ever um experience I would say but you can do small festivals that are a couple days even if you just want to have fun and you want to meet new people I ended up traveling quite a bit after that festival with people I met there. I met my friend Fern, who actually we are still in touch several years later. We were working in the kitchen together. Our camps were next to each other and we're still in touch. We're still very close. Um, we actually had a trip in Peru together recently. So that's something that you just you can't ask for or you can't seek it out with money it's something that comes to you so i'm a big advocate for volunteer work and i feel that it's such a good way to come at life with your heart open because there's no you're not going there expecting something in return like okay I'm getting money and that's why I'm here I hate this job but I'm getting money and I don't like any of these people either but I need to do this no you're there completely because you want to and like imagine living your life like that <laughs> I know that some people have the ability to do that but a lot of us don't a lot of us work jobs we don't like to pay for bills um so by doing this you Obviously, there's some steps that you have to take in order to even be able to do this financially without going to, into a hole. So that's something I want to touch on in a further video. But these are the three topics that I wanted to recommend for traveling the world. Um, everything that I recommended, you can also make money for. So you can work at a hostel and pick up extra shifts to make money, which I did. You can do the campground where you get free stay, but they're not feeding you, they're paying you, okay? You could do the festival. I volunteered before, but during the festival, I found a job working for um, a coffee shack. So I was like a barista and um, serving out drinks and food. And that made great money during the festival. So there's so many different ways that you can make money while traveling, while volunteering, and I'm telling you, in a year's worth of travel, I spent 3,500 US dollars. 
So if that doesn't tell you something, um, please, please just get out there, try it, ask me questions, like and subscribe, and I will be posting more on how I traveled the world with just $3,500.